ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ಶಾರದ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ರಾಮಾಯ ರಾಮಭದ್ರಾಯ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ವೇಧಸೆ ರಘುನಾಥಾಯ ನಾಥಾಯ ಸ್ಮಿತಾಯ ಪತೆಯ ನಮಃ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆನ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಟು ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಯೋಧ್ಯ ಕಾಂಡ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ದಟ್ ದಶರಥ ವಾಸ್ ಲೆವೆಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಇನರ್ ಚೇಂಬರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೈಕೇಯಿ ಆನ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಹರ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಸೆಂಡ್ ರಾಮ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸೈಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಕಾರೋನೇಟ್ ಭರತ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ರಾಮ ದಶರಥ ವಾಸ್ ಅನೇಬಲ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟು ರಾಮ in the meantime when sumantra came to visit him aike he told him to bring rama and then when rama came there seeing the anxious face of dasharatha he was also worried but in the meantime kaike he announced to her decision the decision which was granted to her by dasharatha that rama should go on exile to the forest for 14 years and in the meantime dash bharata her son should be coronated as the regent for dasharatha hearing the words rama expressed no anguish no anxiety no distress and he simply accepted whatever is the decision taken between his parents and he decided to go on exile Rama the slayer of his foes enemies hearing the words of Kaike keen on the pangs of death was in no way moved by them and answered be it so to honor the promise made by the king i will leave for the forest immediately with matted logs tired in the raiment made of bark the garment which is made of the bark tree bark but i desire to know why the illustrious sovereign does not address me o devi fear not i vow in your presence that i shall dwell in the forest dust in bark with matted logs rejoice therefore rejoice therefore whatever command the benevolent monarch you are mindful of my welfare shall lay upon me i will gladly execute to please him there is nothing i would not do for him without hesitation one painful thought still lingers in my mind why does the king not speak to me himself if bharata's enthronement o oh mother by your order i am willing to surrender everything to my brother bharata not only the kingdom but also sita together with every object of desire my wealth and even my life how much more would i do for my father that he may represent the vow of truth and saru your purpose render this matter clear to the king how is it that i behold my father with bowed head shedding tears let messengers on swift horses summon prince bharata immediately from his uncle's house while i without considering the merit or demerit of my father's injunctions enter the dandaka forest for 14 years queen kaike highly pleased by the words uttered by shri ramachandra and assured of his exile reached him to depart saying the eight messengers on swift footed horses will summon bharata immediately from his uncle's home o rama being ready to enter the forest do not delay part therefore with all speed which come with shame the king dare not to speak to you part but do you regard do yourself disregard this O oh, Ramachandra, the king will neither bath nor partake of food till you have entered upon your exile. The king, hearing the words of Kaikeyi, cried, Woo! Woo! and stricken with grief, fell senseless on the garden couch. Rising up the king, Shri Ramachandra, addressed on by the words of Kaikeyi as a horse under the lash, prepared to enter the forest in all haste. His heart, unmoved by the queen's thrill words, he replied, O Devi, I did not desire the kingdom to 
acquire wealth and power, becoming rich and I wish to preserve dharma. Know me like the sages to be protector of dharma. If I can render any service to my father at the cost of my life, as it is, it is as if already accomplished. There is no greater good in this world than service to one's father by thought, word, and deed. On this command, not issued by the king, but by you, I will dwell for fourteen years in the in uninhabited forest. So Rama is convincing Kaikeyi, saying, It doesn't require Kaikeyi to ask the groom to Dasharatha and then Dasharatha to command Rama. Why all this thing? If just Kaikeyi would have told him that I want this stone for my son Bharata, Rama would have accepted her words and honored her words. And with that, it was sufficient for him to go into exile into the forest, leaving everything to Bharata. O oh, Sati, you have been my mother and yet are unacquainted with my nature. If you had known me, no need would have arisen to consult my father on such an insignificant a matter. Now I go to take leave of my mother, Queen Kaushalya, and offer consolation to my wife, Sita. Let Bharata rule the kingdom according to dharma and serve our loyal royal father faithfully. This is a son's abiding duty. Hearing the words of Sri Ramachandra, the king, speechless and overcome with grief, wept aloud, shedding bitter tears. The most illustrious Rama made obeisance to his father, lying pitifully there. And then, blowing to the feet of Kaike, left apartment. Having circumambulated the king and queen, Kaike, with extreme reverence, Sri Ramachandra came forth from the inner chamber and beheld his friend standing at the door. Sri Lakshmana, observing all these things, was filled with wrath, his eyes suffused with tears, followed Rama. Sri Rama circumambulated the sacred articles prepared for the installation ceremony in great reverence and prayed that they should be dedicated to the installation of Prince Bharata. Then, returning from them without a backward glance, he slowly withdrew. The abandoning of the ceremony failed to impair the serenity of Sri Ramachandra. Of his countenance remained unchanged as the moon suffers no diminution of its beauty in the waning period. On renouncing the kingdom and departing for exile, Sri Ramachandra resembled a great yogi, and none observed any change of mood in him. Relinquishing the royal canopy, the beautiful. <laughs> Relinquishing the royal canopy, the beautiful Chamara, and bidding a respectful and affectionate welfare, farewell to his friends and the people's delegates and guests, resembling the sorrow occasioned to them. And restraining his senses, the prince went to the apartments of his mother to break the distressing hiding to her. Those about him found no change in him, neither in adornments of his body, bound in preparation for the royal ceremony, nor in the cheerfulness of his countenance. Such was the truthful Ramachandra. As the autumnal moon does not lose its splendor, so the cheerful of the mighty armed Rama did not diminish. Addressing those standing near with sweetness and respect, he approached his mother Kausalya, the most valorous prince Lakshmana, the sharer of his brother's joys and griefs, followed him, fear of the great distress that would arise in the hearts of his friends, Sri Rama, for his mother's sake, entered the palace in a serene and cheerful mood. Thus ended chapter 19 of Ayodhya Kanda in Ramayana. 
if you know you can see that wonderful personality of rama whether the throne is given to him or whether the throne is taken away from him whether it's given to him or whether it is taken away he is personally unmoved by all the events that is happening in this world all how long we stay in this world first 25 years of our life goes in studies that is brahmachari ashrama the next 25 years of our life is all where we enjoy all this power everything and in that how much we struggle how much we fight and the events do happen one after the other on their own often we get the power often we get a position to do some work if we are doing that work with the sense of making doing the service to the people and serve that particular position we will no and no longer sticking to the greatness so no longer sticking to with all the royalty or all the welfare that comes along with that position as long as we are not stuck to that the people will remain unmoved like rama the rama here is showing an ideal personality that is required for every individual to live in the grahastha ashrama to live the real life where whenever a position or whenever a power or whenever a responsibility is given do it like a service and when it is withdrawn simply be happy and go ahead with the life just move on move on move on because the life is too short to worry about these small matters namaste sharada devi lakshmira puravasini pamaham prasthaye nityam vidyadanancha dehi me bye